All right. So I'm going to try and make this as quick as I can, but it's probably not going to go as quickly as I'd like it to. Um, I was asked a day or so ago from a guy why I chose to go or why I opted to go with the uh, worm gear for the, to drive this thing. And I, like I told him, it would really, it's really kind of a long drawn out answer. So I told him I'd make a video of it. But anyways, before I get too much further into this, Normally I'm not one to say this, but stick around to, to later in the video because there's going to be kind of a, I don't know if you'd want to call it a big announcement or not, but anyways, there's something worthwhile to hear later on in the video. So try to, try to look for that part at least. Um, anyways, so why did I go, oh, so the other thing to keep in mind is Throughout this entire design process, keep in mind there was these 20 or 24 inch uh, cast iron pulleys right here. This also kind of plays into the whole uh, decision making factor. So basically this entire area here was just chocked full of cast iron. <clears throat> My number one thing was aesthetics trying to make this look good while at the same time kind of trying to simplify it and i'm not saying that i don't think that the uh the mechanisms that operate these belts aren't cool looking they are they're very cool looking and if i had a 20 foot high ceiling with a line shaft running through my shop, I absolutely would have stuck with that. But unfortunately, what I had was what looked kind of like a semi that got ran over by a, a freight train. The motor, the uh, drive pulleys were all up on top, just cobbled together with <clears throat> this horrible looking structural steel. It just looked like a complete afterthought, which I mean, obviously it was. <clears throat> and it worked. <clears throat> don't, don't get me wrong. It worked just fine. It's just looks matter. Okay. Let me just get that right out, out of the way, right off the bat. Looks definitely matter. Um, and with that in mind, uh, also, so I wanted to try to make this as simple and as compact as I possibly could. Um, so I started out with, I had a, um, oh, a reduction drive set up back here, motor sitting on the ground. <clears throat> trying to run these big 20 inch pulleys but it was still hard to get you know enough you know fr friction to you know drive the pulleys yada 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 <clears throat> but um it just wasn't going to be a real good situation to have everything over here be a big tripping hazard shop space is kind of at a minimum in in this garage so I thought, what's the one way I could get the greatest amount of gear reduction in the smallest package? And two things came to mind. One was a was cyclodial, cyclo, ah, cyclodial, ah, I still can't say it right. Anyways, <clears throat> a really fancy non-gear sort of setup or a worm gear sort of setup. Um... So that seemed to be fairly logical, but challenging to build. I also had <clears throat> this thing and this thing kicking around the garage that I had scrounged up from Century, but 
ratios didn't work very well. This is 20, oh, 27.6 to 1. This is 10 to 1. I mean, this might not be too bad if I were running a 3450 RPM motor, but I really don't want to go that direction. I want to try and keep everything in the 1750 range. But <clears throat> I just kind of kept coming back to worm gear. Um, and the reason... Part of the reason why I opted to do this also, as opposed to the normal flat belt drive with the interchanging, with the, with the um, direction changing cams or whatever you want to call the, the levers that actuate the belts. Another thing to keep in mind is I'm an electrician or, you know, was by trade. So the motor controls to make any of these motors go forwards, backwards, really isn't that big of a deal, assuming I can come up with all the components, which I'm getting there. <clears throat> um, I had considered everything under the sun as far as trying to make this thing operate and give it a clean, simple appearance. In fact, I even considered possibly setting a gas-powered motor outside and running a low-profile shaft inside and operating it that way, uh, forward, reverse, through a gearbox, you know, whatever. It, it, anything imaginable, I considered. The, almost even considered hydraulics, at the very least a hydraulic uh, motor. But at the end of the day, this is what I thought for as complicated as it is, would have been the simplest way to get there with the least amount of clutter and least amount of steps. Now, the um, one thing that I also kind of want to note on the whole aesthetics things, <clears throat> I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with Fireball Tool. And he did a rebuild of an old, 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 um, one of those gigantic wood cutting band saws. And I'm sure you guys know the ones I'm talking about. Big cast iron frame, 30, 36 inch cast iron wheels, no guards, you know, no nothing, built to operate from a line shaft uh, system. And he did some modifications to it to put guards on it to give it a modern power a modern motor but he did it in a way that looked like it was period correct looked like it should have been on the machine from the beginning and that's really kind of the way i see this and eventually the cochrane bly which Maybe I'll get to that later in the video also. <clears throat> but um, with that in mind, there's... I recently stumbled onto another channel of a guy who has... And I, I wish I could remember his name because I'd put a link to him if I could. But he also has a planer. His motor is mounted almost kind of between... The, uh, the vertical uprights, the vertical supports on it, and it's a much cleaner, nicer looking setup. I think if I remember right, the only thing that's really sticking up out and above is the jack shaft and the, the pulleys. And it looks really, really good, really tasteful, fits the machine perfectly. If I would have seen that before I started in with this journey, I probably would have went more along that line, but I went down this rabbit hole instead, for now. Um, <clears throat> so the one thing that I did see online that really caught my eye 
and I'll show you a picture of it here. And I will put a link to this guy's video. <clears throat> Let's make sure this gets in. This is what caught my eye. He has a nice gear reduction drive here. And then these, this triple V belt going to the input on this old planer. And he's got some fancy electrical controls operating forward and reverse on this thing. And it looks great. It operates seamlessly. It's just a really, really good uh, setup that he's got going here. <clears throat> and this is the guy's, and I think this is the channel it's actually on. And I'll put a link to this in the description on here because I can't pronounce his name for for my if my life depended on it but um anyways that's what put me on to, to this whole thing <clears throat> in the first place seeing that resonated with the fact that you know I have an electrical background anyways so it's like that was kind of the, the light bulb moment um now Now that kind of brings us up to, oh, and while I'm at it, <clears throat> for this to continue on, this is on a really flimsy mount. Uh, it's got a rubber isolating uh, or motor mount here. For me to continue on with this, I actually started building a 5 16 thick steel plate to mount this on. Basically, I was going to weld the housing of this motor assuming it's steel i did not check that for all i know it could be aluminum but at any rate i was going to have to yeah it looks like it's rusty so anyways i was going to have to weld this to a piece of steel that was solid enough to mount on here well not onto this piece of wood but mount to where it wouldn't you know react uh from the torque of all this However, as I was looking more at this last night, I got to thinking to myself, you know, if I turn this motor 90 degrees and set this up over here and then took a chain sprocket from here to the drive or to the input of the planer, I could you know, tweak the speeds any way I wanted to. And I thought, eh, that's kind of convoluted. Maybe that's not the best way to do it. So then I thought, okay, what if I mount the motor here, put this guy <clears throat> here, and then I was like, wait a second, wait a second. Since I do not have these 20 inch pulleys in my way anymore, there is all kinds of room in this area here for me to go motor pulley number one, a secondary pulley or chain and sprocket here to the input of it. And as far as trying to keep things looking nice, all I got to do is put a cover over it. I mean, I've literally been beating my head against the wall for the, the past, what, 10 months that I've had this thing? Eight months, nine months? I don't know. How to drive it and not make it look absolutely ridiculous. I mean, that was, that was really my core uh, thought process to this is how to make it look good when it's all said and done. And that's it. Once I got the pulleys off, and once I got my head in the right spot, in the right place, I could put everything in this compact little area here. I can do it with, certainly with V-belts, or yeah, V-belts or chain drive for the, for the secondary reduction, but it was 
talk about an aha moment. I wish I would have figured that one out, you know, months ago. This thing would already be up and running, but at any rate, that will allow me, obviously, to change speeds at will. I can more easily upgrade um, motor size as I see fit. And it also kind of leads me into what I probably will ultimately do on the Cochrane Bly as far as giving it a better looking thing over here. <clears throat> Let me bring you over here to show you what I mean. I cannot stand this abortion hanging off the side of this thing. A lot of these have, basically where that light is sitting on top of it, have their motor mounted up there. And I was kind of reluctant to do that up until last night when it dawned on me, hey, if I take that motor and put it inside of a shroud of some kind, I can kind of just blend it right in with, you know, the head of this machine. So, anyways, <clears throat> am I disappointed that I spent the time working on the worm gear and worm wheel? No. This was an excellent learning experience. I made a ton of mistakes along the way, but I also learned a lot of stuff along the way. So... In the future, when I actually have a need for a worm gear or worm wheel, I can do it. So anyways, that's where I am now. I've drug out all, well, all of my smaller pulleys for my pulley collection. So I've got some rough ideas on the sizes of pulleys that I'm going to want to employ. <clears throat> and I'm thinking that's going to be one of them. Um, we'll see about that. Anyways. And of course... Got something that I can vary the speed on. I could mount that on the motor. Or I could do something like that on the motor. So I could have some adjustability that way. And this came off of a Shopsmith, I believe. This thing is a variable speed pulley. Now, I don't think I'm going to get quite that um, into it. But that would certainly be interesting. But not... Not ready to go there. So, at any rate, I appreciate the fact that people were willing to follow along with the um, three-ring circus that this has become. And certainly appreciate all the input from people. But, uh, I might, maybe, maybe I was meant to be a girl at some point because I tend, tend to spend a lot of time changing my mind on stuff, so... At any rate, probably the next time you see this thing, it's probably going to have a whole series of pulleys, you know, down in this area. Unless I've already got the actual cover made for it. But at any rate, I think I pretty well got the gist of it across. So I will catch up with you guys later.